studied this. I had no idea. There's something called fossil pollen. Okay, I know what pollen is. I, in fact, I have hay fevers, and I sniff and stuff, and, uh, you know, the, these, the pollen is like little tiny things that come out of trees and irritates my nasal passages. But, um, but basically, they get found in sedimentary layers. Not all pollen eventually, like, makes it into becoming the next tree or whatever. These, of course, are um, like the seeds, if you will, not exactly, but the seeds of trees and plants of various varieties. Well, basically what happens is that if you look at the sedimentary layer, okay, remember we learned how old rocks are by their sediments, we can find in there these different fossil pollens, okay? And different fossil pollens um, exist better in different um, climates. So some trees, for example, like a spruce tree, Spruce trees only work best in the cold. So if you find lots of spruce pollens in this layer, you can infer that it's quite a cold climate. And then some pollens uh, work better in warm climates, and so then you can say, oh, so, so that's pretty cool. So that's what most po types of pollens have, have can, are kind of uh, geared toward different types of climates. We should know that today by looking where you sp spruce trees are grown. In fact, here's what they would look at. They'd find the sediments, and here is some pollen. This looks like under a microscope. And so if you look at this picture here, you can notice that there's this kind of pollen, and, uh, but he's very different than this kind of pollen. And then we see lots of these little guys. But see, each of these pollens can be discovered um, you know, floating around in the air, but eventually in sedimentary rocks. And if you know, you know what variety, scientists know that this particular one, I have no idea, I'm no pollen scientist, but they know that this particular variety um, is a particular... Um, I don't know, uh, type of plant. Let's say that this is the spruce tree. I see him several times right here. Here he is here, here. He's lots of places. So we have this particular pattern, uh, very repeated. I see this one that has looks like a mouth. This mouth guy, he's here and he's here and he's here, etc. And so they would say, oh, this is a spruce tree. And again, I don't know that this is a spruce tree, but say for the argument. And most likely this was in one particular layer of sediments. These would, if this was a spruce, these would all be cold weather crops or pollens, and, uh, and then eventually they find warm. So they can actually infer what type of a climate was in a particular area by the, by the um, uh, pollen method. I think it's just really cool. And here's what the data actually looks like. So once we, um, and we know the age because of how old the rock is, so let's say we have um, in this particular area at 11,000 years old, there's lots of spruce. Well, guess what? Uh, it's cold here. Okay, and then grasses, okay, and oak, these are going to be warmer weather climates. And so you can see what types of, so in these uh, age of sediments, and they use this thing called carbon-14 dating to figure it out, they can count the number of grains, just as we did, you know, from this picture back here. We can count one, two, three, four, five. And once they figure out how many there are, they can actually infer what the climate is like. Because, you know, grasses aren't going to grow in a super-duper cold climate. You know, here we live in Woodland Park. There's not a lot of grass up here. Um, our climate does not support grasses very well. We support spruce and stuff like that. You get the idea. And that's pretty cool. So we can uh, infer information about climates in the past based on... On, the, on this. And then the last one is called a deep sea sediments. And actually it's just related to one particular organism. There's what they call a sand sized shell. That means a shell, and this is a picture of one of those shells, of a single celled animal called Forma inifera. Forma inifera. Did I say that right? I think so. The Forma inifera, and this is a picture of the Forma inifera. It's a very tum tum quitter. Basically, and he's the size of a grain of sand. Um, this is 500, and that little U means micrometers. That's very, very small, people. So uh, we've got a microscope, and we're looking at this tiny little critter. Okay, well, here's the deal. If it's cold weather, he spirals in one direction. And if it's warm weather, he spirals in the other direction. I don't know which one's clockwise versus the other one being counterclockwise, but I think you get the idea. But the point is, is then, of course, these are deep sea sediments. So if you look at the bottom of the ocean, you're going to find these guys spiraling in one direction at this level, and at this level, they're going to spiral in the other direction. And this, this would tell you that it's cold, let's say, and then we have a, a time when it's warm, etc. And so um, they can go back. Of course, we know how old these sediments are using um, ages of rocks techniques, and we can figure out what the climate was like 100 years, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. So um, these are the proxies that help us to understand the climate in the past. Now, what was the climate like in the past? We'll talk about that later. And then a, the bigger question that uh, people are worried about, as I talked about at the beginning podcast, is, um, oh, uh, 
is what's it like in the future. Here's actually a picture. I, I should have forgot I had this. So here's the um, bottom of the ocean, and um, here's the sediments. They are actually kind of cross-eyed, but um, they would get these sediments and they would look in here and they would find these creatures. Here's some more pictures of them. They would find these creatures in each sedimentary layer and they would see they all are kind of pointing in one direction or spiraled in one direction, I'd say, and then they're spiraled in the other. All right. So, I mean, the big question that we're leading to is basically what's a graph? You know, here's today, and let's say here's 100 years ago, let's say, let's call it 1900 or so, what has been happening in the world in the past? And then the big question, what's it going to be like in the future? Because there's a lot of uh, debate. Is the world getting warmer? Is it uh, going to get colder? Is it not a big deal? Uh, Etc. So we're going to get into this sort of climate uh, change debate um, in a later podcast. But I wanted to give you the science of how scientists understand how things how we know about what happened here in the past. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to conclude this podcast. Okay, proxy, 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 proxy. I like that word, proxy. I've got the proxy. Goodbye. <laughs>